Michael? He's restless tonight. I was a little too tough with him this evening. And I scolded him for coming up from the beach with sand in his shoes. It isn't fair. He's still a baby. Six one North Ocean Road. How long there? Five years. Rent or wrong? Rent. Occupation? Minister. Minister. All right, Reverend. I'll read you the homicide report as you give it to Patrolman Kirby. Homicide? That's what it's called when you kill somebody. Made the identity. Even the black cloth the kid uses a mask. Says it came from his tailor shop, lining from his suit. He wants the personal effects. After the inquest, oh, uh, give him a claim form. Right. Reverend David Collins. You do a program on television? Uh, Tuesdays from uh, 9 to 9.30. Oh, yeah, my wife's one of your fans. Uh, who is that man? Don't let it bother you. Who is he? Wait outside in the hall. A couple of things I want to talk to you about. That was the father. The father of the boy I... The father of the burglar you killed. Now, let's get through with this. Statement given by David Collins. Uh, Reverend David Collins, okay? Oh, what is his name? I, I want to talk with him. Who? The father. Simmons. What do you want to talk to him about? Well, what will you tell him, Miss Harry? All right. Here's his name and address. It's a tailor shop. Is there a mother? No, just two of them. Mrs. Collins and I were in my study when we heard a sound in the room of our son, Michael. Mrs. Collins went to his room and... What did the doctor say about her eyes? The 
rope scratched them badly, but he doesn't believe there'll be permanent damage. It was a rough kid, that Frankie Simmons. Mrs. Collins went to his room and found him asleep. Hold it, sir. Yeah, here he is. How about a story, Reverend? Boys, boys, this is a tragedy. Don't make a circus out of it. Sorry, Reverend, but this is news. If John Doe killed a prowler, it'd be a couple of inches among the ads. But when a minister does the same Don't thing... Don't say I killed him. All right, sir, self-defense. No, I'm not looking for an excuse. Do you always pitch like that, Reverend? Of course not. You sure? Don't you do a lot of coaching with the kid teams over on the other side of the bay? Yeah, on the Mighty Mint boxing journey. That's your baby, isn't it, sir? This Frankie Simmons, Reverend, did you ever work on him? Did he ever fight in any of your divisions? No, I wish he had been one of the bunch. Do you think he'd be alive today? Now, listen to me. I want to make several things very clear. I'm not a hero. I don't feel like a hero, and I don't want you to make one of me. I've taken a life. But it isn't the same thing, Reverend. You killed a burglar. Nobody's going to blame you. Please, fellas, no more. All right, Reverend, come on, fellas. Let's go inside. Maybe we can get a story in here. What is there that we two can say to each other? Won't you talk to me, for your sake and mine? Can't we talk about it? I didn't hate your son, Mr. Simmons. It, it was a thing that happened. All right, Simmons, come on in. I remembered. Um, tell him I'm sorry I was delayed. Yes, 
I, I'm leaving immediately. Thank you. That was the bishop's secretary. I was to have been there half an hour ago. David, what happened at the police station? What do they do about these things? Oh, that was no problem. What color is that? Blue. For the bishop, a white one, please. How can you tell what I'm doing? Can you see anything? Darling, after all these years, I, I know your sound patterns. Parsons slays Prowler. This is today's headline. But there is more behind it than the story of a young thief who met death at the hands of the man he sought to rob. The parson in the incident is KGTK's own Reverend David Collins, well known for his unique talks over this same channel every Tuesday evening from 9 to 9.30. Two fathers. One is the man who has steered a lot of pretty bad kids off the crooked path. In boxing, basketball, and baseball. Michael, turn it off. Isn't it? Oh, ironic? Mom. Michael. Right it's Ronnie Fletcher's father, Mom. Red land, weighed a clean living. Should have laid one of them low to an ignominious death. Two sons. One with a long record of petty theft, vandalism, and reforms. Just recently escaped from the sheriff's honor farm. A harbor policeman who recognized and tried to arrest him suffered a stab wound in the upper arm. And now look at the son of the minister who so often asked for charity and understanding of these wayward boys from the wrong side of the bay. Here is a product of a good home, of gentle care, of parental love. Was Frankie Simmons so loved? Was Frankie given the same consideration, the same opportunity? Unfortunately, and then the program director, you should have heard him. When I told him that the bishop wants me to take a sabbatical from television. Darling, I, I wish you'd try to get some sleep. The bishop was right. What would I look like? What lesson would I be teaching if I sat before that camera preaching goodness and mercy while in my hands? I can't sleep. You put a nightlight in my room, but it's no good. It gets dark when I close my eyes. Well, would you like to bed down somewhere else, Michael? How about the uh, couch in the living room, huh? Well, I tried that, and that's no good, too. I know what I would like. <sighs> so do I. Okay, hop in. There you go. I'm a rejected mother. I'd be glad it's my turn to be kicked black and blue before morning. Happy? Yep. Said your prayers? Yep. You always tell me to pray for others. Right. Not for myself. Right. Well, that's not so good. It isn't. Why not? Well, if I keep praying for other people, how can I ever get anything? Now, wait a minute. Well, anyway, so I worked out a deal with Ronnie Fletcher and Bobby Miller. They tell me what they want, and I pray for them to get it. And I tell them what I want, and they pray for me. Of course, it has to be two for one, because my dad's a minister and has keen connections. But this time, we all prayed for me, because this is very, very important. How do I turn him off? Doesn't he have a button or something? Dad, are you practically the strongest man in the world? Well, there may be some who think they're strong. Mm, one or two. But I'll bet they're not heroes. Michael, I don't want to hear you say that. Anyway, that's what we prayed for, to be like you. Because if I was like you, I'd never be scared. All right, come on, Michael. Go to sleep, huh? Because the sooner you go to sleep, the sooner there'll be another day. And then another day. And after a while, everybody will forget about this whole bad business. And we'll be just like we were before. Except we'll be older and wiser. The important thing now, Michael, is to forget and fall asleep. Can you do that? Forget. Feel safe. Go to sleep. I haven't kissed him all day. He's always so busy.
newspaper guys, nosy bodies. Everybody with nothing to do asks, where's the tailor? Well, I don't know where the tailor is. Now beat it. I want my suit. Get out. I'll bring a cop in here. You get out and stay out. What do you want? Do you have any idea when Mr. Simmons may be back? I don't get any ideas. All I get around here is trouble. If he don't show up, I'm stuck for three months' rent. And believe me, I'm going to sell every lousy suit in this joint till I make it back. Well, what makes you think he won't return? What are you so worried about? He owe you money? Get lost. I hate collectors. I'm not a bill collector. I have a past association with Mr. Simmons. I wanted to talk to him. Seen you someplace before. I know that face. You ever been in jail? No. Wanna buy me a drink? No. Get out. What do you want all of my life? I came here to talk to Mr. Simmons about his son. I'll talk to you about Frankie. He robbed me a dozen times, that dirty crook. From my house, from my pocketbook, a dozen times. Old man Simmons, he's always okay. You want to know what that kid really was? A born murderer. But you just trying to tell that to old man Simmons. I'll bet you're from the insurance company. I'll bet there's a policy on that kid. Sure. Haven't you any idea where I can find him? Did he pack? Did he have a suitcase that's missing? I've seen you someplace. Now, where do I know you from? Mr. Simmons comes back. Please tell him I still want to speak with him. Hey, you guys, help me move this thing. never remember. I don't get asked if I remember it. I just get looking. What's your old stuff anyway? Let's play Rocket to the Moon. No, let's play Burglar. I'll be my dad. That's all you want to play is Burglar. I want to play television. Look, your dad only talks on television. My dad killed a burglar. I'll play Burglar if I can be your father. How can you be my father? You weren't even there. I saw you play it. I haven't been anybody today. You can be a pilot for Rocket to the Moon. Burglar. Television. I want to be a pilot. Brother. Pilot. Yeah. Next time I do any praying for them. Okay, you pirates. I know you're waiting aboard.
For these bountiful gifts which we are about to receive, I give thanks, O Lord. Amen. That's what I like about working in a minister's family. Everybody's so religious. You shouldn't be cooking and cleaning and waiting on all of us. You are hired as a nurse. <laughs> Listen, you know what everybody says when I tell them whose house I'm in. Gee, you get interested in jobs, they say. Give us bulletins on everything that happens. <laughs> That's what this is, an interesting job. You bet. I almost got murdered today. And do you give them bulletins? Oh, you're kidding. What did you say, Michael? I never talk about my patients. That's part of how they train us. What should I gossip about? About how you feel on account of that Simmons kid? Not me. His father was going to kill me today. But you do talk about it. So we talk about other things, like Please, your church. Please, will let Michael have a turn to speak? Could I please have some more butter? Uh, you said something about his father. Whose father? The burglars. What about him? He was going to kill me today. He was going to get his revenge. David, I, I can't see his face. Is he teasing? No, honest. Honest imagination, Michael. Oh, really? He came out with his long teeth sticking out? Long teeth? How long were his teeth? About like this. I've seen Mr. Simmons, and his teeth are very small and regular, and you don't even know what he looks like. I do, too. Didn't I see him on television and in the newspapers? And when he tried to kill me today, his eyes were all red and scary. Michael, you're upsetting your mother. Now... But it happened. Where did it happen? They should told me not to play. Where was that? The old wharf. After you were told, Michael. David, please, one at a time. Mr. Simmons is going to push me into the paddle wheel. What? Maybe he was only going to do it with me, but his eyes were all red and he had long hair and long teeth. Oh, he was plotting to kill me, I could tell. But you fought him off. Watch him chased us away. Uh, Michael, isn't this the evening you're supposed to go over and watch television at Ronnie Fletcher's house? Skunkies. What? That's what we call him now. Skunky? Oh, he loves it. What time is it? Uh, it's nearly seven. Go get your jacket and I'll walk you as far as the church. Some kid. Which one of you does he take after? But David, where is that man? What man? The father. Oh, now, Lisa, you don't... I'll get it. Hello, Reverend Collins. Everybody there already? I'm sorry. I'll be right over. An evening from 7 till 10. Adult Bible class, men's forum, rehearsal of your dramatics group. Oh, but you can skip that, can't you? And not see Diana McCluskey play Jezebel? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. You're still worried about Michael? This bandage, not being able to see, everything seems so exaggerated. I know, darling, but try to think the way you did before the bandage. Michael was forbidden to play on that wharf, but he did. So his conscience bothered him. And out of his feeling of guilt, he started to imagine. You know how that boy can imagine. David, Lisa, David. I, um, uh, I wanted to see Simmons. I wanted to try again to set myself right with him. So I went down to his tailor shop today. He wasn't there. And the people I spoke to think he's out of town. He's gone away. So don't you see... The whole thing comes right back to Michael's vivid imagination. Look, darling, I've got to run to the church now. Michael. Michael, will you stop talking about Mr. Simmons and that whole episode? Did you see what your story did to your mother? No. Well, it shook her up very badly. Why? 
because of what happened and the injury to her eyes and the strain of being unable to see. Now, help out, will you? If you feel you must tell stories like that, tell them to me. Please leave your mother out of it. Don't you care what happens to me? Well, of course I care. Don't you ever doubt that for one single moment. Then why is it okay to tell you and not Mom? Oh, I know. Girls are different. Well, uh, if that settles the matter, good enough. Come on, let's go. <laughs> now, come on. Remember, one hour of television or playing with Ronnie. Skunky. One hour with the Fletcher boy and then straight home. Huh? Okay. Now, remember our agreement not to worry your mother. About Mr. Simmons? Okay. Well, won't she be surprised if I get killed? I'm sorry to be late. That's all right. All right. You're all aware of the thing that happened in my house. And you're curious, wondering what must it be like to be a minister and have a thing like that happen? I owe you the answer to that question. But I would rather not treat it as a subject for group discussion. It's much too soon. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what's the topic for this evening? I'm sorry, Chef, but... Can fear destroy the body? Oh, yes. Let's go back over last Saturday's talk. Now, suppose fear crowds out faith. Fear creates a vacuum. Sickness rushes in to fill it. And this kind of sickness spreads. Remember that fear... Excuse me, gentlemen. What is it, Michael? I promise you won't get mad. I promise. What's the matter? You forget something? Well, I wanted to go down the street, but there's that tree, and it's so dark under it. Somebody's there. Now, Michael... You promised you wouldn't get mad. Mother, what's this about a tree? Somebody's there, looking at me. I'll bet it was Mr. Simmons. It was not. I'll go with you. Well, what about your date with Ronnie? Skunky? Uh, yes. I'll see him tomorrow. Michael. I'll be right back. Now, there's no reason why you can't keep your date with uh, Skunky. I want to show you, Michael, that by itself, the dark is nothing to be afraid of. It's only a place where there's no light. It's what we think. It's afraid. Now, come on, I'll show you. Look out, Dad. He's going to jump you. If he does, it's two to one. You get him tired first. I won't have to. Everything in there is exactly the same as when you pass by in the daytime. The only difference is in being unable to see it. But how do you know? Watch. Dad, look out! See? Satisfied? Along to Skunkies. And Mike, ask Mr. Fletcher to drive you home.
Sorry. That's all right, Chief. Something the matter with the bazaar? I'm sure it'll be ready for Monday. The real reason I came out, I wanted to talk to you about what happened the other night at your house. Please, Chef, not now. What I wanted to say was the family got together and had a big powwow, you know, with my sister getting married next week. That kind of thing. Well, we want you to know it doesn't make any difference. You're still our minister, and you're going to officiate. Thanks, Chef. Uh, can you handle the forum for this session? It's kind of like fishing before you know how to bait hooks. Try, Chef. I've got to run home and get my car. Mr. Simmons. Mr. Simmons. Are you in there? Simmons. Well, look who's back. Want to buy me a drink? Is Simmons here? Uh, who cares about him? All he did was work. Work, work, work. Someone claimed to have seen him today. You know, I'll bet sometimes he wished he was Frankie. Who wants to work a big job all the time? Did you draw the shade? I want to know if he's back. Come on, buy me a drink. You've had enough. Will you try to clear your mind and understand what I'm saying to you? It's very important. Who are you to tell me I got too much to drink? What kind of a fresh remark is that? I know how much I ought to drink. Who do you want around here? Who gave you permission to come snooping around here? Hey, everybody! Look what I've got here. It's the preacher. The preacher that killed Frankie. Got away with murder. That's what he did. Murder. Broke the old man's heart. There he is. Somewhere. Hi, Dad. I was just leaving Mike, my dried frog. His name's Julius. Oh, I thought the two of you were over at your house. We got tossed out. Mr. Fletcher said we were making too much noise. I can believe it. Inside, youngster, to bed. You better run on home now, Ronnie. What about Julius? Michael, to bed. Everything's too much noise in my house. I'm far away, maybe dead. They all wished I was around to make any kind of noise. Um, leaving us? Yeah. I was giving them to Mike to remember me. Well, you're very generous. He must have been a fine looking frog in his prime. His father ran over to you from the driveway. Uh, sit down. You've got plenty of time. There we go. Uh,. Did you tell your parents you were leaving? Well, they won't even care. Oh, but they will. And so will your friends. I don't know what the children's choir will do without you. I sing a rotten. You have a very unusual voice. Michael, don't you think so? Anybody can get used to it. Uh, while you're sitting here, why don't you take your knapsack off? You have to rest your shoulders whatever you can on a long trip. Yeah, that's right. Say, what's in this, huh? Some bananas in his rock collection. I wish I had a banana. My father says he works hard all day talking and listening. He can't stand kids when he gets home. Well, he told me he's got the smartest kid in town. Oh, I mean it. Ministers aren't allowed to tell lies. I wish I could live here with you. Why can't I? Well, can I talk to you as man to man, straight from the shoulder? I already have a boy. What would your father do without any son at all? That wouldn't be fair. Uh, were you planning to go some distance? South America. Well, that's pretty far. I just don't know what he'd do. I hope for his sake you'll be coming back very soon. Well, after he cries a bit, maybe. Uh, better not eat your bananas. Save them for an emergency. 
Uh, you got anything home? Well, I was saving a piece of apple pie in my dress with my underwear. Oh, uh, well, maybe um, you could sneak back and get it. It would only be a short delay. I'm sure hungry. You need that pie. Maybe take a nap, too, huh? Get a, a fresh start in the morning. I'd have to skip school. Well, there are lots of schools in South America. You can make it up easy. I'll just sneak in quiet. Oh, uh, what about Julius? Well, maybe I better take him back. Who needs Julius anyhow? I got my dad. Uh, thanks. Uh, why don't you use the side gate? It's easier. I know, but I came this way. Oh. Yeah, well, um, here we go. Uh, there we are. Thanks. Good night, Mr. Collins. Good night. Home safely, so did I. I can't help it. I can't help it. It's just that I have so much time to remember. Then always being afraid. I... How was the evening? Productive. In the forum, too? All right. Bible class? Small. If that's Mrs. Webb, Tell her I've gone to bed. Hello. Hello, Miss Collins. This is Shep Hamilton. How do you feel? Oh, I'm fine. I I'll be up and about soon. Well, I wanted to report to the Reverend the way I handled the forum. Everything's smooth. The class ran itself. And as for your play group, only about half the cast showed up. It's Saturday night, you know. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Off-duty. Want anybody else? No, we can't give out his home number. He'll be here tomorrow morning. Well, all right. I'll make it. Uh, tell Lieutenant Marlin I'll be there early in the morning. Thank you. showboat at the wharf when Simmons came aboard. Now, it's almost impossible to get details from an eight-year-old. Simmons went for him? Not exactly. Threatened him? Not in words. I suppose there was something in his eyes. We can't take action for the way a man looked, and according to an eight-year-old. I haven't suggested action. Did he carry a weapon, a knife, a gun? Lieutenant, I wasn't there. I can't describe well, who when... Who can? You say you don't want us to question your boy. Well, I know one thing. Simmons was hanging around outside my church last night. That's different. You saw him? Not the man himself. But did you notice a habit he has? He slices off the burnt end of a cigarette so as to save the stub. Uses a razor. And he saves those stubs in a flat tin box. You saw that? 
Yep. Well, that box and those cigarette stubs were lying underneath the tree by the church. It was dark in there, and Michael was afraid to go by. I went through with him, and I turned on my flashlight. That's what I found. Good, let's have them. I don't have them. I left them there. I, I didn't know I'd be calling you. I took a car outside. I took a cab. I'll give you a lift. You'll be able to show me those cigarette butts. What goes? A circus? Our church bazaar opens tomorrow afternoon. All right. Let's see those cigarette butts. They were right here, but they're gone. Never mind. I'll, I'll put a tracer on them and see what it turns up. Anytime you feel the need, Reverend, don't hesitate to call us. That's why we're here. several announcements. The marriage of Marjorie Hamilton to William Robert North will take place as scheduled next Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but with the following change. And I think it is a happy one for the bride and groom. Not I, but Bishop Rigsby himself will officiate. Naturally, with the great good fortune of having him here, we're really going to put him to work. While Bishop Rigsby is here, he will preside over the christening scheduled for that morning. He does us this honor my request. Let us accept it at... Let us accept it as the... We will dispense with the final hymn. the ring right into the customers. We'll make it a fast one, too. The sock and the kiss and the reaction of the customers. Get it? Right. Oh, hi, Reverend. Did my son come in here? No, I haven't seen him. Aren't you surprised to see me here? Michael, are you hey. in here? This isn't just sports, it's news. Your news. First, there was a kid you couldn't help. He got himself killed. Now, the ones that do come into the fold. New on both ends. That's drama. Real drama. Michael! Michael. 
You left before the end of the services. Michael, you should know better. Everybody always says that. Were you stopped by anyone? Did any stranger speak to you? Like who? Oh, Michael, help us, will you? I have a hundred things to do. Your mother can't leave the house, and she's anxious about you. Don't worry about me. There's Mrs. Willis. Now go on home with her. Are you listening to me? Because I'm giving you an order. Go home. Go on, Mike. Sure. Michael? David? Mrs. Willis? Who is it? Michael? David? Why doesn't somebody answer? Now it's more to keep out light than anything else. You got a pair of dark glasses? David, why did you try to hide this from me? Why alarm you when there was no need? No need? You called the police. I heard you on this extension. And you hadn't been at the church last night. Where were you? You knew there was danger. It's true. Simmons was hanging around. But that wasn't proof he intended any harm. Proof? 
don't you know what the proof would be? I'll send you and Michael out of town. You coming with us? No, Lisa. I'm a minister, and I cannot run away from my obligations just because there might be danger to me. We're not going without you. We're not leaving you here. If he wants to hurt us, he'll have to hurt whoever stays. Where's Michael? Why isn't Michael here? He's trying to take my boy from me. Where's Michael? No, no, no. Darling, he's perfectly safe. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing bad can happen to him or to any of us ever. Say that to yourself. Remember, if God be for us, who can be against us? And he is for us, Lisa. With all that faith in God, don't you figure he could handle things while you're away? He has his work, Mrs. Willis, and I have mine. And as for yours, you weren't hired as a bodyguard. I won't reproach you if you choose to leave us. You think it's a fact that a person could get hurt around here? I'd better dust off my judo lessons. Oh, you know, I used to be a nurse in the Navy. Of course, I was younger then. But when some of those boys started being ambulatory... There's a detective out there. I saw his badge. A detective? Where? I let him in. You went to the door, Michael? I told you not to. Now, you stay in here. You know what just happened to my wife? The boy told me. What do you plan to do about it? She saw a strange man in the bedroom, Reverend. I guess that's what she saw. She saw Simmons. Only it could have been somebody else. Somebody looking for you, let's say. He goes through the house. He steps into the wrong room. She screams. He gets panicky and runs. Reasonable? But we know it was Simmons. No, Reverend, we don't know. That's what I'm trying to show you. First, her eyes are still in bad shape. Second, how could she recognize Simmons anyway? When did she even see a news photo of him? You've been blindfolded since that night. Well, I haven't been blindfolded, and I saw him at my church this morning. Simmons? He came to the entrance as I was speaking. He stood there looking at me, and then he walked away. Reverend, uh, according to the department, he isn't even in town. I put a tracer on him. I came by to tell you what we found. Well, I'll tell you what I found. My wife and son crouched in a closet like a pair of hunted animals. My wife in hysterics. My home entered like a public building. You think this is all imagination? No. There could be more to it. Maybe I'm persecuting Simmons. Is that it, Lieutenant? He's irritating my conscience, haunting me. And I think the only way to stop him is to get rid of him. I don't go that far. Look, you're an above average sensitive guy who's had a pretty bad shock. In time, I think you'll get over it. Meanwhile, if it'll help you sleep better, I'll have the house watched for a couple of days. Okay? Thanks to the Civic Minded Sponsors who have donated this their regular time. KGTK is able to bring you their annual free swinging breakers, the Tournament of the Mighty Mints. And here come the first contestants. Hey, Mike. Betting on you to win, kid. Your dad's a referee. Dad is crooked. Hey, I've been in salute. I got a good notion to send my Ronnie around, pay you a little visit. How about it, Ronnie? Skunky's the only guy I can lick. Who's Skunky? Your son. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Presenting your first bout in the free 
heavyweight division. <laughs> two rounds to a decision. In this corner, weighing 51 and 3 eighths pounds, the massacre man himself, Marlon Mike Collins. There he is. There's Mike. In this corner, weighing two trunks. Oh, I, I can't at see him. At 52 pounds, one ounce. From the other side of the harbor, the deadly demon, Bucky Solano. Your referee, Reverend David Collins.
needed evidence. You said you couldn't move without it. This wasn't intended to make a fire, just a lot of smoke. But this kind of rags could only come from a tailor shop. Bits of suit material, lining, wool. The man must be insane. He was willing to risk every life there just to get his hands on my son. It was a miracle that only the Fletcher boy had to be sent to the hospital. Why'd you let Simmons go? You had your thumbs on his windpipe, wasn't it, what you wanted? I thought it was right up until I almost... It's frightening. Living in heat for nearly a week. It fills your whole body. If there's any room left over, that's filled by fear. You take your suits to a pretty good cleaner. Briggs on 8th Street? Yes, what about him? Briggs. D.C. could mean David Collins. How is that possible? I don't know, Reverend. I don't think this is very good evidence against Simmons. Oh, no, wait a minute. Picking up a coat of mine is the easiest thing that anybody could do, any place. On a baseball field, in a gym, in church, in my own home. That's when he did it. Sunday, when he frightened Mrs. Collins. We'll have the lab check on these, see what it brings up. Reverend, why don't you take your wife and son on a little vacation? Lieutenant, what must I do to get through to you? Let something happen to my boy. You've gotten through. Sure, this could have been planted by you. There's as much reason to think that Simmons planted it. The fact is, uh, that's the way I lean right now. Well, that's a lot better. Not a lot. He could claim that he was trying to save your boy from the fire. But we happen to know. Reverend. Could I arrest a man on what we know but can't prove? You haven't any choice but to arrest the man. He's after my son. So I arrest him. On what? Some technical charge? And then he's out in 24 hours? Then we book him again, and a day later he's loose again? Don't you see how it is? We can't hold him until we have some real evidence. Until he's done something. And you said it yourself a minute ago. By then it'll be too late. this for the camp? It's enough to go around the world. We may decide not to stay. Go off on a little side trip someplace. Or many little side trips. Lisa, this is what you wanted. You begged me to take you and Michael away. I know I was hysterical, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> well, then, maybe it's my turn. And if he finds us? We'll move on again, I guess. How we live. He won't be able to work, not as a minister. He would find us just as easily as now. There's nothing very special about being a minister. A lot of hard work and very little money. If I put half the effort and study into a business, I'm not much of a minister anyway. I'm too blunt, too much temper. And everybody loves you very much. I just want time. In time, you'll give up. And what I'd like to know is, what happens to you in that time? Lisa, what happens to me if I stay? He's like some kind of wild animal that keeps coming at you until it kills you or you kill it. The only way to avoid that choice is to run. Because, Lisa, if he ever again lays hands on Michael... Hello? Mrs. Collins? This is Mrs. Fletcher, Ronnie's mother. Is the Reverend there? It's foolish. The kid doesn't know what he's saying. He wants Mike, not Collins. Reverend, did you know that Ronnie is in Oceanside Hospital? Yes. Well, he wants you. 
Well, I, I, I mean, we all want you. Will you give me that number, please? Bay 2121. I'll call you back. Just wait there. Is my family entitled to nothing because they're my family? Poor little Ronnie Fletcher, that's a shame. She didn't say he was in critical condition. She said he wants me. That could be nothing but a whim. To endanger you and Michael because a seven-year-old boy has a whim. I... Besides, you're not much of a minister. You can always read me, can't you? Mm-hmm. Even the fine print. That's skunky. You know, the other day he asked me to be his father. I ought to go down there if only to beat some sense into Fletcher. On the other hand, if you don't quarrel with him, he'll be home soon. Huh? This might be short, it might not. There's no way of knowing. You finish packing. I'll take a cab and leave you the car. Have everything ready. Put the luggage in the trunk. I'll get back as soon as I can. We'll be on our way. Have Mrs. Willis do everything. She's willing and wonderful. Okay? Now it's okay. Somewhere in the world, at this moment, someone's marrying a minister. Crazy. I think it's wonderful. Good evening, Reverend. Good evening. There's a boy here named Fletcher, Ronnie Fletcher. Oh, yes, they're waiting for you. Room 324. Uh, how is the boy? Well, Dr. Rowland is with him now. I see. Thank you. Three, please. Reverend hefts these bags. You won't be so quick to take off. Oh, here he is. Collins residence. Is it my husband? Okay, just as fast as we can. That was the hospital. The Fletcher boy's calling for Mike. The Reverend says to bring him right over. Michael? That's what he said. Sounds serious. Oh, those poor people. Mike! Mike, we've got an errand! I'll pass the car, follow you right up. I gotta bring Skunky his present. Michael! He's waiting for me! Father, if you can fill in for me, go ahead. I don't care. I don't care as long as somebody does something. Why don't you do it? It's you he wants. What's the matter? What happened? Isn't he here? Oh, that child. Lisa, what are you talking about? He ran ahead. Mrs. Willis let us out at the corner, and he was off like an arrow. What are you talking about? Where is Michael? Didn't you send for him? You asked someone to call and say that Ronnie Fletcher... Mr. Simmons. Oh, David. 
Please. Where did you last see Mike? Outside, running ahead of me.
Oh. Oh, darling. I told you I didn't hate your son. I didn't want that to happen. Why won't you forgive me? He's crying. 